Here's your wrestling news for May 22nd, 2023. And we're kicking off today with Cameron Grimes, who was finally called up to SmackDown as part of the recent WWE draft, months after his time with NXT officially came to an end. In his debut match on the blue brand, Grimes defeated Baron Corbin in mere seconds, and fans can expect more wins in the future for the former North American champion. Fightful Select reports that Grimes has a ton of support behind the scenes, with Triple H being just one of several people to be incredibly high on Grimes' work thus far. WWE had wanted to call Grimes up months ago, but decided to wait until the right creative idea, a clear sign that the company is dead serious about him having the best chance to succeed on the main roster. One longtime WWE employee told Fightful they saw Grimes as a slam dunk in that he could work any number of styles, both in the ring and as an on-screen character. While we won't say who he beat, we can report that Grimes did win his match during the SmackDown taping that will air this Friday, and expect plenty more wins in the future. Over to New Japan Strong now as the promotion recently held its resurgence event and crowned the inaugural New Japan Strong Women's Champion. In the first of two semi-finals matches, Mercedes Monet, representing New Japan, was able to defeat CMLL's Stephanie Vacker to earn a spot in the finals later in the show. Willow Nightingale of AEW then advanced to the finals with a win over Stardom's Momo Kogo, and these matches and the finals were three of the best matches on the show. The finals between Nightingale and Monet was a hard-hitting affair which had the crowd hooked, with both women earning an ovation from the audience before the bout had even started. The only issue came with the closing moments of the match, as when Nightingale hit a powerbomb, and while Monet did not kick out, the referee stopped his count at two. It was only after a second powerbomb that Nightingale was able to get the win and put her name in the history books as the first New Japan Strong Women's Champion. Given the star power of Mercedes Monet, it was quite the shock to see Nightingale stand tall when all was said and done. And do you think New Japan picked the right woman to be the inaugural champion? Sound off in the comments. The tournament proved to be a hit with fans at the event, but that awkward finish has raised a lot of questions, and it's believed that Mercedes Monet suffered an injury during the finals. The apparent injury seemed to occur when Monet jumped from the top rope and ring post to the floor, clotheslining Nightingale in the process, as after the move, Monet appeared to be unable to put any weight on her leg. The match ended about 60 seconds later, which included that strange two count that Monet didn't kick out of, and after the match, the former WWE superstar was carried out of the ringside area. It is worth stating that neither Mercedes Monet nor New Japan have confirmed reports of an apparent injury, but we expect an update to be given within the next few days. If Monet is injured, hopefully it isn't anything too severe, and we are wishing her all the best after this tournament finals match didn't go exactly according to plan. The last time WWE fans saw Drew McIntyre, it was at WrestleMania 39, and there's been a lot of questions about his future with the promotion. McIntyre's deal with WWE will expire in early 2024, and many assume he will not re-sign, but now the Scottish Warrior may have revealed what's next. During tonight's Raw, Imperium will face Sami Zayn, Kevin Owens, and a mystery partner, and that person may be none other than the former WWE Champion. On Twitter, McIntyre retweeted a post from WWE asking fans who they think the third man will be, and speculation grew and Drew quickly unretweeted the post. It's been said that McIntyre and WWE have been far apart on both his creative and his pay, but teaming with the tag team champions and a future program with Imperium and Gunther may have won Drew over. We won't know who the mystery person will be until tonight's episode of Raw airs, and do you think Drew will stick with WWE, or is his time with the company truly coming to an end? For months, Thunder Rosa has been out with a debilitating injury, which would force the former AEW Women's World Champion to relinquish her title. Not only has Rosa had to deal with her recovery, but she's also had to deal with accusations from fans that she's been exaggerating her injury in an ultimately futile attempt to not have to drop the title. Rosa has always denied the claim that her injury has been anything other than 100% legitimate, and on Busted Open Radio, spoke about just how difficult this recovery process has been on her. She said, The accusations made things much more difficult than they were mentally for me. There were days that I, I'm gonna be honest, and I've said it on my YouTube channel, I wanted to kill myself. 
Everything stopped and there's nothing you can do and I'm so thankful for that and I have a really good team and a really good family. My son, I think he's the one who helped me the most and he helped me many times, many nights, just telling me everything's gonna be okay. Thankfully, Rosa did not act upon those dark feelings within her and recently returned to AEW programming and was seen going into the office of Tony Khan. Thunder Rosa has been announced for AEW Collision, but she isn't yet fully cleared to wrestle, and we're wishing her all the best on her continuing road to recovery. AEW Collision was only announced recently, but fans have known about plans for the show for some time, and an announcement will be coming in a couple of days. On Twitter, Tony Khan said the location for the first AEW Collision will be announced this Wednesday as part of a stacked episode of AEW Dynamite. Now the location of the show will be a major point of interest, as for months we've heard that the event will take place in Chicago, Illinois, and will feature the return of CM Punk. With AEW and Punk at odds again though, the promotion has been working on alternative locations with a crowd that won't be as focused on seeing Punk if he doesn't show up for Collision. While not confirmed, it has been speculated that AEW Collision could premiere from the Daily's Place in Jacksonville, Florida in the event that Punk isn't on the show. Punk was pulled from all material for Collision during the announcement presentation, and while his future remains uncertain, we may know much more after the announcement on this week's Dynamite. More from New Japan's strong resurgence now, as well Willow Nightingale became the first NJPW Strong Women's Champion, two title reigns came to a surprising end without a match taking place. During the show, Kyle Fletcher of Aussie Open announced that the popular tag team were having to forfeit their strong openweight tag team titles as well as the IWGP World Tag Team Championships. This decision is because of Fletcher's tag team partner Mark Davis being injured and there's no sign that he'll be ready to return to the ring anytime soon. Aussie Open captured the IWGP tag titles from Bishimon on April 8th and won the openweight tag titles just one week later, and both championships will see new champions decided at the upcoming Dominion event on June 4th. May has not been a good month for tag teams, with Liv Morgan and Raquel Rodriguez having to vacate the WWE Women's Tag Team titles, and we're wishing Davis a very speedy recovery. Earlier this month, WWE arrived in Puerto Rico for Backlash, the promotion's first premium live event in the area in over 18 years. In addition to Backlash, WWE also hosted an episode of SmackDown in Puerto Rico, and these shows proved to be incredibly lucrative for the promotion. As Brandon Thurston of WrestleNomics reports, the gate for the go-home SmackDown was $1.01 million, while Backlash took home $1.4 million from the live gate. In addition to the $1.5 million that Puerto Rico's authorities paid WWE to hold Backlash in San Juan, that means WWE earned just short of $4 million for the two nights, despite the absence of Roman Reigns. Much of the appeal of Backlash was on Bad Bunny, who won his San Juan street fight with Damian Priest, and given the success of the show, both critically and from a finances standpoint, it likely won't be another 18 years before WWE returns to Puerto Rico. And we're ending today with Cody Rhodes as the American Nightmare has proven to be a workhorse since returning from injury earlier this year. Rhodes can be found at a ton of WWE's untelevised live events, something that the bigger names in the company don't appear at, and that's an issue for the former Intercontinental Champion. During the WWE Super Show at Fayetteville, North Carolina, Rhodes defeated Finn Balor in a street fight, and after his win, grabbed the mic to call out Roman Reigns and Brock Lesnar. Rhodes suggested that Reigns, who was falsely advertised for the show, didn't appear because he was afraid of Cody and said that his theory extends to his Knight of Champions opponent as well. Cody also promised the fans that the next time he competes in Fayetteville, he hopes to have two wins over Lesnar under his belt and also plans on wearing some gold around his waist. Cody's promo was a clear sign that WWE will revisit the feud with Roman Reigns in due time, and the American Nightmare remains hell-bent on finishing the story.